What's up guys, Steven here with Slab Dynasty, and in this video, I'm gonna show you my top three baits for winter bass fishing. Let's do it. Okay guys, winter fishing. Winter's here, it's getting cold. The north, you guys have already been in this for a while, but down here in the southeast, we're in North Carolina, uh, the temperatures of the water are finally starting to get down into the to the 50s, uh, maybe even colder than that, you know, once we get into January. And what I wanna do is show you guys my top three baits when the water gets really, really cold this winter. And I just wanna preface, you know, these are just my opinions. I don't know everything, I'm not a pro, but you know, this is what I've had the most success with in the winter time in the Southeast. So I just wanna make sure you guys understand that context. These are not gonna be the top baits everywhere in the, in the country. Your lake might require some different techniques, but for me, for my waters around North Carolina and elsewhere in the Southeast in the winter time, these three baits have worked extremely well for me and I have them in my top three. So let's get started. All right guys, so the first bait, and I'm gonna go in basically ascending order. So my third favorite winter bait, my second, and then my first. I'm gonna finish with my, my absolute favorite, but uh, my third favorite here is a jigging spoon. I've got a couple of them here. This one right here is actually made by P-Line. Uh, I forget the exact name of this. We're gonna link everything down in the description. I believe it's called their laser jigging spoon. Really, really, really nice jigging spoon. It's got a really good like foil finish on all their colors. So it's, it puts off really good flash, but it also looks like pretty natural. You get a lot of jigging spoons like, you know, like this one and some others uh, that are really just a hunk of metal. Uh, P-Line puts a lot of thought into them, in, into theirs. They've got eyes, they've got like a nice paint job, they've got that foil finish. So I really, really like this one. Uh, and, and the other thing with this one is it's really, really dense. So it gets down there super, super fast. The reason I like jigging spoons, guys, in general in the winter time is uh, you, can, you can video game fish with them. If you find fish that are kind of in that dormant winter state, you'll find a lot of times that they'll be grouped up like down on the bottom, uh, almost like in, in like a sleeping mode. You can drop this thing down and just basically twitch your rod really fast like that right in their face and you can watch it all on your sonar. They will bite this. Sometimes you'll even snag those fish, uh, which, you know, if it's super, super tough in the middle of winter, you'll take anything you can get, right? I've got one other spoon here I just wanted to mention. This is a, a Hopkins Shorty, I believe it's called. This is, this is an old school kind of classic jigging spoon. As far as differences are concerned, I don't see a whole lot of differences. Again, I don't really know. I'm not like a master jigging spoon guy, but all I know is that these two have worked really well for me. This one more so in clearer water. This guy, a lot of times I'll, I'll throw him in dirtier water, uh, but both of them really do a solid job of getting those, those really dormant, deep winter fish to react. All right guys, bait number two, my second favorite wintertime bait is a jerk bait. Jerk baits obviously are staple wintertime baits. I think if you watch any sort of lists like this about winter baits, jerk baits pretty much gonna be in all of them. This is just a great, great imitation of a dying shad, a struggling shad. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, with, with the erratic action of this thing, uh, it really triggers uh, just a reaction from those fish. Those fish can't help but lash out at this bait when it's doing its thing, uh, darting from side to side down there. So this can really trigger those, those really cold, lethargic fish into biting. The one thing with jerk baits though, is you have to work them slow. The colder it is, the longer you want to wait on that pause. Jerk, jerk, pause, 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 pause. Sometimes upwards of like 30 seconds or more on the pause. Jerk again, pause for another 30, 45 seconds. So really the pause is the biggest key in the winter time with these baits. You wanna let these baits just sit and suspend. That's the other thing with jerk baits. If you have a test tank or you have a pool uh, or even your bathtub, you can do this in the bathtub, uh, you wanna try to get these things to suspend perfectly. And if you can't get them perfectly, you want them to sink. Okay, sinking is better than floating. You don't want them to float in the winter time. So sometimes, you know, these things are gonna be tuned a little different. There might be some, some factory sort of imperfections and you might get some that float, 
What you wanna do is take um, these things called suspend dots or suspend strips. They're basically like lead stickers. We'll link them down below, like I said, uh, and paste these on the underside of these baits. And what you can do is if you've got a floating bait, uh, just paste one or two of those on and you can oftentimes get them to suspend or sink. Two models that I throw the most are gonna be this Rapala Shadow Wrap Deep. And then of course, I've got a Mega Bass Vision 110. You know, if you're new to the sport and you haven't heard about a Vision 110, you'll definitely hear about it uh, from, from more people than just me. It's, it's probably the most popular jerkbait on the market. Comes with a steep price tag. But guys, don't knock it until you try it. This thing is an absolute fish catcher. There's something different about it. I can't tell you exactly what's different about it. I, I haven't gone into that deep of an analysis on this bait yet, but uh, just the, the way that it darts, the way that it rolls and things like that just absolutely triggers lethargic fish, uh, more so really than any other jerkbait on the market in my opinion. I've had times where this shadow wrap has, has outperformed a, a mega bass, but for the most part, this is what I'm gonna have tied on for jerkbait fishing in the winter. One more side note, they also make a deep version of this bait, a plus one, and they actually make a plus two, Mega Bass Vision 110 plus one and plus two. Uh, when I'm fishing super deep, clear water, I'll go to that plus one or plus two so I can really get down there uh, to get those fish's attention that might be you know, 30 plus feet down. Okay guys, and the number one winter bass fishing lure, bait, whatever you wanna say, is gonna be an A rig, an Alabama rig. Now, <laughs> I actually just recently lost two Alabama rigs that had, uh, you know, like they were fully rigged out. So I apologize for these being uh, basically naked, not having anything on them. Uh, these are, this one's fresh out of the package. This one, I just haven't fully rigged up yet. Uh, but, you know, both of these are, are good options for A rigs. This one, I believe, is from a company called. G Funk. It's a company out in California. It, I've had this thing for a while and I haven't thrown it yet. Uh, I'm typically throwing a Picasso Schooly rig. That's my number one Alabama rig. I had two of them. I lost them both recently. I'm super bummed about that. Uh, but I've heard some good things about this guy. One cool thing about this this Alabama rig is out of the package, it basically comes ready to tournament fish. If you guys tournament fish or you want to get into tournament fishing. You need to look out for the for the rules, not only the, the tournament rules about A-Rigs, but also the state laws about A-Rigs. There, there are state laws. Several states have pretty strict governance over what you can throw as far as Alabama rig style baits are concerned. This one out of the package basically has the two top arms ready to go as um, basically teasers, so they don't have hooks on them. And then you put hooks on the bottom three. So it's got the, the uh, swivels ready to go. Shout out to, to Tactical Bassin, uh, Matt Allen with Tactical Bassin. If you guys watch, watch him, uh, he's got great, great information. And I've learned a lot about what I, what I know about Alabama rigs from him. And uh, you know the way he likes to rig his Alabama rigs is, is quite similar to this. These two top baits, they're up high and they're up ahead horizontally. And then these three back baits, this, this middle one's the longest one. This is typically the one they're gonna go for. And then these two outside baits, they're, they're lower. The other thing with this particular A-Rig 2 is that it doesn't have any snaps on it. So all the snaps are off, only premium solid hardware on here. So this thing's ready to go for big fish. I definitely need to throw that one a little bit more, but like I said, guys, my main one is a Picasso Schooly rig. That's the one I trust in the most. This one's pretty interesting though. I had to throw this in here. Uh, I have not gotten the chance to throw this thing. This is fresh out of the package, but this is a Shane's Bates Blades of Glory. And as you can see, it's a multi-tiered uh, Alabama rig. You've got um, a front set of baits that you can put on here and then a back set. Now, obviously with something like this where you're throwing on, it looks like nine different baits, you really do have to be careful about your state laws. Some states, they, they limit it at five hooked baits. Some states limit it at three. So with this bait, you know, you've got to really figure out, <laughs> got to make a decision, which baits do you want uh, to have hooks on them? Obviously, in this case, this back middle one's going to be good. These bottom two are going to be good. Guys, there's so much I could go into about A-Rigs. I'll save it for another video. The main thing that you want to know, though, is that A-Rigs, they obviously mimic schools of bait 
uh, which, you know, the, that's always a great opportunity for a bass in the winter time. But the biggest thing, and the reason A-Rigs are so popular in the winter time, is because you, you fish them, you can fish them really slow. You can slow roll them, just like you would slow roll a single swim bait, except you've got a school of swim baits. So you're essentially slow rolling a school of shad down there, and they just can't pass up a slow, sluggish moving, large meal. And yeah, they might just be hitting one bait, but you know, that, that large profile and, and just the surface area of this bait, so to speak, uh, it, you know, it draws it, that, those fish's attention when, when otherwise they wouldn't be interested. So that's a big key with A-Rigs in the winter time. You know, fish them slow, just creep them along the bottom a lot of times is a good way to do things. What I like to do, as you can see with this, this bait, I've actually put um, like belly weighted EWG hooks or belly weighted swim bait hooks uh, instead of you know putting like a jig head on there, an exposed hook jig head, this will keep this bait really weedless and it'll keep you from hanging up. So I like to fish this stuff like in deep brush piles and things like that. I can actually like worm this thing and, and bring it through brush like extremely well. Yeah guys, other than that, you know, for whatever reason, an A-Rig just absolutely knocks them out for me in the winter time. So that is my number one winter bait. That's all I've got guys. If you've got any questions about my top three or just about any type of baits or winter fishing in general, definitely drop them down below. And if you're new to our channel, definitely check us out. We do other how-to videos, we do bait reviews, but we also do really, really high quality bass fishing, kind of cinematic videos. They're really sweet, guys. Definitely check those out if you get a chance and consider subscribing if you like what you see. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Slab out.